Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. And it took my partner a long time to understand the process that you see now. And in certain ways you have rehearsed the process. For even in the small exercise you have just accomplished, you take that which is the first intuitive thought and you translate it as best you can into a linear concept or sentence or group of words or word. And many times it is metaphoric and this is common. A puzzle that must be solved. An image that must be interpreted. Even words that don't make sense that will mean other things in other languages. And this is very, very normal. Spirit speaks to humanity one at a time and never in a group, if you've noticed. As this message is given to the group, it's not for the group. It's for each and individual soul in the room. An overlay of that, which is quantum, is metaphoric, the third language. Now the third language is intuition, which rides upon the signal, if you wish, of the communication that you have accepted to hear in the room. Not on the audio, but the fact that you are tuned in with intent. And so every single channeling has an attribute of more than one communication. Some will hear the same words and feel the same energies and walk away feeling nothing happened. Another human sitting next to them will have the healing that they asked for. And so it's never a group energy. And that is why I speak to each one of you separately. It's complex. You tune in to the words. Your logic understands the linearity of the syntax. And at the same time, there are concepts being given to you through intuition. We call it the third language as a metaphor. For it is not the language that is after two. <laughs> the third language is a language of the three. And the three in numerological terms is catalyst. So what would a language be that was catalytic? That would be an energy which changes something while it remains the same. As it comes in contact with something else, the something else changes while it remains stable. Therefore, you are receiving right now, at whatever level you wish to receive it, a catalytic message. And sometimes the message is simple. It's a safe place. You're with family. Or, this is real. The reality of the message, one of the biggest obstacles of a human being, is it the man in the chair pretending? Or is he doing what I think he is doing? And let me tell you what he's doing. Years it took him to understand the process and complement it with his energy. For in the beginning, when it was time for Cryon to come into this man's life, I came in with information that he called burst information. All at once given to him as a thought group, as a concept, which he then had to interpret, but not in real time. That is to say, I would give him information, there would be a pause, and he would repeat what he thought he was. I would give him information, there would be a pause, and then he would repeat that, what he thought it was. So it was back and forth. 
and it was separate. And that is to say, there was Cryon and then there was Lee. Years later, up to four, he started integrating that which was me and that which was him into a system that now flows. And let me tell you what the system is and how it works. I can feed him intuitive thought instantly. I can feed it to him faster than he can speak. And so the system goes like this. Channeling is the manifestation of translation of intuitive linearity. <laughs> I have learned to slow down that which I wish the human beings to know to a pace that he can interpret in real time. And that was pretty good until about four years ago when I asked him if he wanted to go to the next step. And he said, what step would that be? And I said, total integration. And that would be so that you could hear me. The love that I have for humanity, the compassion of the other side of the veil, and not just words. And so it was more than intuitive thought. It was concepts combined with a linear vo voice message, combined with the emotion of God, all in a package that was complex, that took him years to see and recognize and trust. So the words you hear now, he has no concept are coming until they are actually manifested in the air. It took him a long time. This is not what humans are used to. They want to know what's coming. They want the concepts at least to be presented in advance. And some of them are good at talking around concepts. So it becomes spirit and them. And that is also channeling. Some will take concepts and be able to channel around them with core information given to them, to them at different points in their lecture channeling. That's valid channeling. Some will write it down. That's valid channeling. Some will paint a picture. <laughs> and that's valid channeling. Some will compose music. It's beautiful. It touches your soul. And that's channeling. Some will have sculptures. And that's channeling. All the things which are creative on this planet, which fulfill a passion of delivery, of beauty to another human being can be channeled. The healer who sits in front of the patient and receives the information from the patient's body, which we call innate, to them allows them to channel the healing solution. They're channeling. When you face off with someone who was difficult and you wish to have the right words that will show the love of God in you and yet the sternness of truth and you search your depth of language for the delivery and then suddenly something comes out which is succinct and beautiful and they have no words to reply because you have given them truth and you will say I wonder where that came from that's channeling. And so when you face off in the groups, in this time, in this day, as you did, and you ask for a message for perhaps not only yourself, but for the others that you do not know, this exercise tests that which you feel uncomfortable with. For you are first faced with a social situation. What if I can't think of anything, you say? <laughs> well, I appear to be, to be a fool, you say. What if I look in their eyes and nothing, nothing comes across? 
you say. Well, I'll have something in reserve, perhaps, you say. I'll think of something wise to say in case I get nothing. And all of this is part of the process. And we know that. If you do this often enough, you learn to sit back and relax. And you don't think of anything in reserve. For you know that spirit will give you something. And that something will be good enough. And you trust it. When my partner first began to work, he had concerns. What if he gathered an auditorium full of people and I did not show up? <laughs> you don't think that occurred. What would he have in reserve? <laughs> and he had to walk through this. And I let him. I let him think about it and worry about it. Until we integrated. And the best thing that ever happened to him is when he let go. When he let go of the concern, the worry, the embarrassment, the social, the social necessity of survival not to look bad. And that's when the intuition flew in. And that's when the portal opened up. That's when the pipeline gets bigger. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of the process of where it comes from. <laughs> For you're told it, of course, originates in the brain. And it doesn't. <laughs> For what you are experiencing, despite all the things that the psychologists will tell you, is not biological. And yet you are told that thought is processed and created by the brain in packages which they understand to be synapse, perhaps even going so far as to be called engrams of consciousness, <laughs> carried in packets through nerves to present concepts that human beings have. Verbalized linearity and whatever you want to call it. And it's none of those things. For these come from the outside in. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute. What happened to the higher self? So this begs a question. Where is the higher self? Well, you might say, it's inside me. What if it was you? What if it lurks, if you want to call that, in what is called innate? Now we get complex. For this is the quantum field around every single human being that knows all about the body, it knows more than the body does. Let me ask you this question yet again. Does it make sense to you that you could have disease in your body and the body doesn't know it? Isn't it supposed to be intelligent? Intelligent enough to know when it's diseased, what it can stand, what it cannot stand, and yet even the most basic premises of metaphysics has you doing kinesiology, which is muscle testing. And here is where you're asking innate, am I allergic to this? Can I have this? What is the dosage? Do I have a disease? Isn't it odd that that does not come from inside? Your immune system fights things, but it doesn't even know it has something to fight sometimes. You can have all the white blood vessels in your body rushing to one place to fight a cancer and you don't even know you have cancer because your body doesn't tell you. There's a disconnect somewhere in there, you might say. Well, that disconnect is not designed to be a disconnect. You're supposed to be able to be in touch with innate. That is to say, that part of your body that is not biological 
Very difficult to explain. Now it's integrated, but what good does it do to have integration when the innate is in the other room with the door shut? So what you're asking for is a full body experience to open the door and know the things that innate knows. There are some unanswered biological questions that to this day are not even being asked. A hundred trillion molecules of DNA are identical in your body. Your big toe has the same DNA as the top of your head. It's not like your cellular structure which knows whether it's a kidney or a fingernail. Your DNA is identical all over your body. There is a process where it communicates a hundred trillion times a quantity that communicates with itself and knows all about you. That's the DNA that we speak of. And in that there is consciousness. It's innate. You might say there's another you in there <laughs> that you'd like to get in touch with. And you'd be right. We've spoken of the divine parts of you. And this is the intuitive generator. Innate is quantum. The field around you and your DNA is quantum. And that is to say it is actually in a multi-dimensional state. Human intuition is that innate which often speaks to you when you least expect it. Channeling is tuning into it to the degree where innate is always working and becomes linear. Do you have help? Oh yes. <laughs> and this is the hardest thing we have ever taught. You want to think you have guides and angels. Well go ahead and think it. If it makes you happy. Go ahead and name them if it makes you happy. Go ahead and count them if it makes you happy. For human beings need to often linearize quantum concepts in order for it to fall into an order where they can appreciate it and use it and understand it. The truth of the matter is you cannot name them and you cannot count them. This is very difficult. We told you at one time in the lineage of Kryon teaching that you had three guides. That is a metaphor. <laughs> Just like the third language is a metaphor. It's about the three. Have you noticed the packages of three which are divine? Even the doctrines of earth in the rigidness of the metaphors and the mythology of some of your religious practices celebrate the three. The Godhead is the three. The three in one. You'll find it everywhere on the planet. It is part of divinity. It is seen in a trilogy of energies. You have three guides, not really. They are the energy of the three. And the three, again, is a catalytic number. In other words, whatever it is that you call help, that you believe is around you, catalyzes you and everything else around you in synchronicity. I told you this would not make a lot of sense. Some of you are getting it and some of you are not. Again we turn to the soup. It is the only metaphor we have. If your life is a bowl of soup, count the flavor. Count the salt. You can't. But you know it's there. I call upon the salt. All three of them. You see? I call, upon, I call upon the flavor, which I happens to know are named Joe, Henry, and Mildred. <laughs> and they're not, and you can't. Count love for me. How many loves do you have for your children? 
<laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Can you understand the concept? Is it too etheric for you? Or do you really need to see their faces? And if you could, what would they look like? What does the face of God look like? And I will again tell you this, if you could see their faces, it would be so confusing because your face is theirs. And you would see you three times. The higher self is in every molecule of the soup. It is part of innate. Doesn't reside in your heart or your brain. It is outside of you and inside of you. It permeates you in a quantum field. You cannot locate it. It is higher than you are. And some will say, well, that means it's above me. Of course it's not inside me. That's incorrect. It's called the higher self because it vibrates higher than you do. <laughs> Therefore, it is the part of you which is in a vibratory state which creates a multidimensional reality. If you could only open the door between the corporeal you and the quantum you called the higher self, you would be complete. And that is the study, is it not? So here's what it comes down to. Do you have help? Yes. Are they guides and angels? If you wish. If you wish. It's more than that. They are a soup of energy which is partially you and partially the higher you. It is the divine. All divine things are connected to the source. The creative source of the universe is part of you. The connection is there. Do you have help? Yes. Where is it really coming from? Yes. <laughs> you cannot identify a place. Well, there is heaven, is there not? If you wish. Or is it in every air molecule? Is it in the life of nature? Does it permeate Gaia? Is it everything you see? Is it light? Yes. <laughs> It means you're never alone. Here's what the masters and the shamans know. Wherever I walk, I have help. They all have my face. They're beautiful. I am a piece of God. I am quantum. My guides are endless. I have help. My intuition comes from the creative source. I have help from the air, the animals, the trees, the dirt I walk on. Love permeates everything around me. It is part of innate. I do not ask where, for there is no where. I do not ask who, for the who is the one, and it is I. And it may not make sense, because it's not in 3D. But can you feel the beauty? Can you feel the compassion which created it? Most of all, can you feel it in you and use it? And that is the invitation. The day my partner gave up trying to figure it out is when it came in. <laughs> Don't try to figure it out. If you're consumed with love, for an animal, for a child, for another human being. Do you stop and figure it out? <laughs> or do you simply verbalize it to everyone you know and the universe? I'm in love. And I'm happy about it. <laughs> what else can you say? When you write love letters to one you're in love with, what do you say? What can you say? Not enough. Overwhelming it is, quantum it is, a piece of God it is. What is the one thing an animal can feel that you can give it beyond food, nurturing, shelter? And that is love. And is it true or is it not true that they look in your eyes and love you back? And it is. 
It is a universal quantum energy that cannot be denied. It will tame the wild horse. And it's the only thing it will. It is palatable. It is beautiful. And it is quantum. And you don't try to figure that out, do you? So why don't you now apply this to yourself? I'm not going to figure out how many guides I have, what the angels look like, or whether they come and they go. I am connected to spirit in a way where I never have to do that. Here's what my partner knows. As long as he keeps this portal clean, as long as he lives, when he sits in the chair, I'll be there. That's what he knows. And now before he channels, he doesn't worry about what it's going to be like, how long it's going to last, what the subject might be, or whether I'll be there. Do you see that? So the exercise you just did shows some things to you. I know who's here. I know what the thought processes are. Let it go. Best thing you can do before opening your mouth to another person where you have to say something succinct, correct, proper, beautiful is to empty your mind of everything you might say. <laughs> and then say whatever it is that comes to you. And that takes trust and faith. And that will be innate talking. A full body experience linked to your consciousness that will make a difference in your life. It's an advanced teaching for an advanced group who will sit in chairs today and ask the hard questions. And so what is it you'll do next? I hope you practice it. You're going to find something when you do. It works. A whole other kind of thinking, a whole other language. Trust. Don't try to figure it out. Just know you're never alone. And so it is.